Hello, I'm Kevin Berger, author of Atheism is Untenable, a book in which I argue why skeptical atheism crumbles beneath its own weight. On this channel, I don't engage in apologetics. Instead, I apply the principles of polemics and skepticism to atheism and the claims made by atheists, of which, despite their <coughs> claims to the contrary, there are many, including these among others. This is justified nonetheless. If you enjoy or find my content interesting or informative, be sure to subscribe, turn on those notifications, like and share, and be sure to check out the Justified Nonetheless Patreon project for even more exclusive content. Hello my little tumbleweeds. No matter how many times I try to explain this, people either don't get the point or, more likely in my estimation, they're intentionally dodging the point. There exist concepts, right? People have concepts for all sorts of things. For example, there's the concept of a particle that always moves at speeds faster than the speed of light. There's also a concept for a region of space-time from which matter and energy can escape but cannot be entered from the outside. Essentially the, the opposite of a black hole. There's a term for the former particle, which is a tachyon. There's also a term for the latter, which is a white hole. However, neither of these hypotheticals have been substantiated with empirical evidence to show that they actually exist in reality. That's precisely what makes them hypotheticals, right? Thus, there's a concept and there's a linguistic expression for the concept. However, neither the concept nor the expression equate to the object or the phenomenon to which it refers. That's a false equivalency. If one argues that the concept is the same thing as the object or the phenomenon to which it refers, then surely a deity exists. Indeed, every deity exists because we have the concepts for these deities. Further, neither the concept nor the expression substantiate the existence of the object or the phenomenon to which it refers. To argue that the object or the phenomenon exists because the concept exists is an ontological fallacy. And to argue that the object or the phenomenon exists because we have terminology for it is a semantic fallacy. Indeed, once again, if one argues that either of these means that the object or the phenomenon exists, then surely a date exists because we have terminology for that, right? This seems perfectly irrational, though. Similarly, there exists a concept of a distinction between not believing a claim and believing its negation. We have terminology associated with this concept, such as non-belief and unbelief as well. I do not dispute this. However, just as before, this does not equate to the actual distinction between not believing a claim and believing its negation. This does not substantiate the phenomenon of finding neither a claim nor its negation to be more likely than the other, which is what belief is. Belief is a propositional attitude that manifests as neural activity, and it is the distinction in neural activity between not believing a claim and believing the negation of that claim that is the point of contention. It is the distinction in neural activity between not believing a claim and believing the negation of the claim that needs to be substantiated. It is the distinction in neural activity between not believing a claim and believing the negation that is the implicit assertion that arises by defining atheism as an absence of belief in deities, as opposed to belief that there are none. It is for this implicit claim that definitional atheists incur a burden of proof, not for doubting that a deity exists, not for saying, I don't believe you, but for the assertion that this absence of belief is legitimately different from belief to the contrary. It is for this claim that I demand evidence. And I demand empirical evidence because that's the standard that atheists set for the existence of a deity. 
I'm reminded of the debate between Aaron Ra and Jake Brancatella that I previously uploaded dubbing over part of what Aaron Ra was saying as an illustration of what it is that I'm trying to explain. And everyone complained about it. They didn't seem to understand what it was about. So what I'm going to do now is present an excerpt of that transcript from his opening argument with the following alterations. Whenever Ra said believers, I will be substituting the word atheist. And whenever he said the word God, I will be substituting the phrase asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary. Notice how the rationale that Ra uses is equally applicable. Atheists hate nothing more than the burden of proof, and that's why they try to redefine what evidence means. So it is no longer a fact that indicates because they can't give you any facts, not any that point their way. So they give arguments instead of evidence, essentially word games, trying to define their assert distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary into existence with erroneous or fallacious assumptions built into most of them. If you ever look at a list of logical fallacies, you might notice that every one of them has been used as an argument for the asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary. And in my experience, every argument for the asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary involves at least one logical fallacy and usually more than one, as I'm sure we will both demonstrate in our upcoming discussion, at which time I will claim that as one of the many facts and evidence in my case against the asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary. Of course, the first fact and evidence against the asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary is that there is no evidence for the asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary. We have to start there because logically having no reason to believe something is a pretty good reason not to believe it, especially when such is neither probable or even possible. We don't get to say that anything is possible because we know too many things that are not. A cow cannot jump over the moon, for example. That's not just improbable, that's physically impossible. In order to say that something is possible, there must be a precedent or a parallel or verified phenomenon indicating that such possibility exists. You don't have that for gods or ghosts or demons or souls or magic enchantments like blessings or curses. So not only is none of that evident, it's not even a possibility to consider. Atheists can't even get a consistent definition of what their asserted distinction between non-belief and belief to the contrary is supposed to be. The reality is that it hasn't been demonstrated that a genuine distinction exists in reality between not believing P and believing the negation of P. It hasn't been shown that it's possible to withhold belief. Things like the famous gumball analogy don't substantiate this. They address agnosticism rather than epistemism. Definitional atheists haven't identified what it is that distinguishes propositional atheism from definitional atheism. When pressed on their belief regarding the non-existence of a deity, they respond, I don't know, but that's a different answer to a different question. A person can believe a proposition is true without knowing that it is. Definitional atheists will say, just because I don't believe that a deity does exist doesn't mean that I'm claiming that no deity exists, but one can believe a proposition is true without asserting it to be knowledge. They'll argue, I don't have enough information to be sure, but certainty isn't a prerequisite of belief. One can believe something is true without being certain of it. Definitional atheists will say, I am open to considering new evidence, but being open to new information does not preclude belief. People believe all sorts of things and then later change their minds. They'll say, not believing is the only justifiable position, but justification isn't a prerequisite of belief either. People believe all sorts of unjustified propositions. Atheists don't get to say that it's possible to find neither a pair of binary propositions more likely than the other without first demonstrating that a possibility exists, and they have not done that. They have not presented any precedent or parallel or verified phenomenon indicating that such a possibility exists. They simply assert this to be the case. When asked, they present analogies like the gumball analogy that addresses agnosticism rather than epistemism. Yes, we can agree that one can withhold judgment. However, that equates to an admission that one does not know and so has no bearing on the presence of belief. It's just a disingenuous slate of mouth. If it is argued that not believing X implies believing not X is a claim on the part of religious people and as such it needs evidence to support it, 
then logically it follows that not believing X does not imply not believing not X is also a claim on the part of the atheist, and as such, it carries its own burden of proof. It's just the negation of the original assertion, and there are no special rules for negative claims. What can be asserted without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. Atheists don't get to say that there's a genuine distinction between not believing P and believing the negation of P without first demonstrating this claim distinction in neural activity. We can agree that there is a difference conceptually. We can agree that there's a difference linguistically as well. However, neither of these is the point of contention and neither of these substantiates the difference in neurology to which they refer, which is the point of contention. What's worse this is if you were to ask a propositional atheist, they'd say that they don't know that no date exists. They'd say that they aren't claiming to know that no date exists. They'd say that they aren't absolutely certain that no date exists. They'd say that they're open to considering new evidence. And I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that even Gnostic atheists who do claim to know that no date exists would also say that they're open to considering new information too. And as far as non-belief being the only justified position, even I will agree to that. However, that's only relevant to the presence of belief, provided that belief is a choice, and it's not. In summary, none of these things serves as an actual difference between propositional atheism and definitional atheism. It doesn't serve as an actual distinction between not believing P and believing the negation of P without claiming to know it. And so the fact that we cannot tell them apart is a pretty good reason to think that there is no real distinction aside from the concept and the linguistics. All right, so there you have it. On the one hand, you have the concept, whether it be the distinction between not believing P and believing the negation of P, or tachyons, or white holes, or a deity, or whatever it may be. And then you have, on the other hand, the actual object, or event, or phenomenon. Don't dispute this. But this is not the same as this, and this does not substantiate this. I want empirical evidence of this. I, I don't know how to make it any more clear than that. Until next time, remember, even if your beliefs aren't necessarily true, they should be justified nonetheless.